You and I are persons with freedom, which means we have the capacity to participate in the inner life of the Trinity in a way that a squirrel or a dog or a cat or a giraffe mm -hmm. will not, mm -hmm. does not have and will never have. But all of creation, Christ came to save the whole universe. And when the Word was made flesh, all of physical creation was impacted. Christopher, one of the most searched for things on YouTube, really on the internet, are animals, pets. People, <laughs> pets, they get into our hearts. Obviously, it's a huge experience of, of humanity as being one with creation, but, you know, we, uh, you know, we appreciate nature. We love nature shows. We like being a part of nature. Um, we love animals, and then we, we bring these animals into our homes. We call them pets. Yeah. We give them names. <laughs> you know, like... You and I and both have... Furry creatures oh running around our house. What, oh my gosh! Have, has that ever like yes. hit you? Or you're like you're looking. Absolutely. At, we have this animal, a naked yeah. furry creature, <laughs> sitting on my couch right next yeah. to me. What the heck's going on? I've here? got three dogs right now. Don't judge. I've got three <laughs> dogs, a cat, and uh, I've got some chickens. And I did have a rabbit recently, but he passed away, and it was very sad. It was a very sad experience. My nine-year-old daughter cried like crazy over this little rabbit who we hardly ever even played with. Um, we have one dog, yeah, and the amount of <laughs> interior work I needed to go through <laughs> to accept this dog into my life 11 years ago because of pet wounds from when I was <laughs> yeah, a boy. Right. Uh, oh but that's got to be because you had a pet that you loved so much. Exactly. That happened. Exactly. Right. Twice. Okay. I had I had this dog. That I just like the storybook thing. I'm six years old. I see the puppy in the window at the pet shop downtown. Mm -hmm. Beg my dad, please, please, please. And he's like, no, no, no. A few days later, I come home from school, and there's a box with this puppy in it, in our house. And this puppy just leaps out of the box and leaps into my heart. Come on. Leaps into my heart. Exactly. Six years old. I named this dog Snuggles because I'd, sn I'd sleep with this sure. dog and snuggle yeah, up to sure. it. I love this dog. And this dog. He loved you. To whatever yeah. capacity. Right. Loved me. Yeah. And... Uh, the poor dog was never really well house trained. And my parents, a few years later, got new rugs in the house. And I come home from school. And this dog would, oh, no. we had him on a line in the backyard, a pulley. And I, I'd be up the alley coming home from school. And I'd hear Snuggles running. Ah, and he'd never learn. He'd run as far as he could <laughs> and do backflips. This was how I was welcomed home from school every day. One day for I'm coming like two home. For years? For, for three years. Oh, my gosh. And one day I come home and there's no dog running to greet me yikes and my parents tell me oh we got we we gave him away because uh the the carpets how old were you uh nine. Oh my gosh it was it was it was devastating oh absolutely devastating to my nine-year-old heart and then uh a few years later like at that point i said never again i'm never gonna let a dog into my heart again a few years later my dad brings home a golden retriever puppy and i resisted for a few weeks like i really tried to put up the wall and i just couldn't hold the wall and I finally let it down. That dog jumped into my heart. And two years later, um, that dog was killed in our mm. backyard, strangled uh, by another dog who got caught up uh, in its line and accident. choked it. Yeah, that's horrible. And I'm, I'm 14 years old, and I remember this so distinctly, pounding on the rib cage of this dead dog, saying, oh. never, ever oh. again will I let a dog into my heart. 30 whatever years later, I'm on retreat and I'm seeing on this retreat, I'm paying attention to my dreams. I have some vivid dreams, especially when I'm on retreat. And I'm seeing on this dream, uh, Dorothy at the end of The Wizard of Oz, where she says to the wizard, I don't think there's anything in that black bag for me. Mm -hmm. And my retreat director said, there's something in that black bag for you. you Got to look in there. And, uh, so I have a dream again, and the black bag opens up, and out jump those two dogs. The two, the same two the dogs. The same again. two dogs, and they're just licking me all <laughs> over. And a place in my heart was getting opened up that had been shut down. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, what's a dog a symbol of? It's a symbol of unconditional love. You know, he licks mm -hmm. you when you smell mm -hmm. bad. Mm -hmm. He licks you when you're in a good mood, when you're in a bad mood, when everybody else is rejected you or you feel <laughs> unlovable that dog's licking you he doesn't care he loves you dog's a symbol of unconditional love and in some ways when i said never again 
I shut down this place in my heart. And, and that place was getting opened up again after 30 whatever years. And uh, I told my confessor at the end of that retreat, I said, can I suggest my own penance? Because if this is not a penance, I'm not going to do it. But I think I'm supposed to get a dog. And he prayed about it and he said, that's your penance. <laughs> so this has been the longest penance I've ever had to do. <laughs> But it's been a, obviously a beautiful. So you got the dog. I got the dog as my penance for, on that retreat and for I my know confession. This you and know her this dog name very is well. Mandy. And Mandy has been such a blessing to my heart, to yeah. my kids' hearts, to yeah. my wife's heart. Uh, but it's just a testimony. That long story that I I ended up sharing. It's just a testimony to how deep yeah. Yeah. this stuff goes. Our relationships with animals. In fact, I'll yeah. I'll often tell my students, if you're having trouble getting in touch with your heart, what were your childhood pets? Go mm -hmm. back there. Mm -hmm. Go or to the pet that you wanted to have but you mm -hmm. never were allowed to have. Mm -hmm. Go back to that place. That will be a window into your mm -hmm. heart. And you're going through something similar mm -hmm. right now because you just got this chocolate I, lab I do. puppy. I've got a five month old chocolate lab and I, I've always loved labs. I've had them I had them growing up and um, I grew up hunting pheasant and uh, had these bird dogs. And my favorite dog I ever had was a chocolate lab named Max who was amazing. Is this the one I met out in Colorado? In Colorado, yeah, and he got hit by a car when he was four years old, which is really sad, but he was an amazing dog, awesome dog, and uh, then I had another one after that, but then I got you know married, kids, family, and I was just so busy, I didn't feel like I had the time to, to devote to a dog in that way and anymore. And you're, you're a dog trainer, people. I am a dog, yeah, that's that right, that's you. right, I'm a dog trainer as well. And um, so anyway, my wife, uh, for my 50th birthday, decided that it's time that I have another chocolate lab. So she saved up for it. and That was uh, two years ago. It was two years ago, thing. yeah. We searched around quite a bit, though. I looked, uh, anyway, I found a great dog. I've got him. He's five months old. And I'm amazed um, at just what you're talking about. I'm amazed at just how deep and how quick like, he that gets into my heart. I love this little thing. I love this dog. He's so much fun. And... Um, I love, like, it just reminds me, I don't know, that little TikTok video, the hap, hap, happy dog, the hap, hap, happy dog, that thing, man, that's real, like, Yo, that, man. that brings, like, so much joy, my kids love this dog, and, um, I mean, truly, like, and especially with, especially with my journey with theology of the body, uh, it may sound silly, but it's not at all, it's, it's the real not. thing. My journey with theology of the body has been um, an amazing experience with respect to my pets and yeah. animals. Right? When you know what, yes. it, what theology of the body really right. reveals to us, it's not strange right. at all. So, the, I mean, in the broadest sense, theology of the body is a sacramental worldview, which means I'm seeing God's presence everywhere. In all of in creation. In all of creation. And not just his presence, but his overabundant joy and beauty, happiness, glory, and my five-month-old chocolate lab Absolutely. embodies that as much as I can think of anything for me, anyway. When it's I real. see wagging his tail and excited to see me, and he's looking at me, and I'm, I'm training him, and he's learning how to—I'm learning how to relate to him. He's learning how to relate to me. Um, it's it's awesome, and so uh, you know that the I think like one of the things that has really helped me in my prayer life, um, and you've been a real help to me with this as well, is seeing every aspect of creation as not just a prayer, but like a a liturgy you know it's like entering into uh entering into the liturgy of the universe that everything in all creation was created to give glory to god and our anim animals do that grass does that the trees, trees do, that, do that the yep. leaves do that the the sun does it the the breeze blowing the wind does it. and that's why these things when they happen to us so often there are experiences of deep joy and deep peace in our hearts because we're we're like we're experiencing the presence of God as it's meant to be in in the beauty of creation. Now we can get all screwed up with that too. You know? Yeah, and anything good can get wacky. Right. And you have people in the world today who, who kind of idolize their pets. Chickens are people too, Christopher. Yeah, well, you've heard me say that more right. than once, haven't you? Yeah, <laughs> yeah so, so what is the difference between yeah. the human person and an animal? Yeah. What's the right way to love God's creatures? Um, we don't do anything immoral when we kill a chicken and eat it. Uh, somebody said this to me once, and it really struck me like, oh, that's a good in to the difference between mm -hmm. animals and, and the human person. If you're driving down the road and you see a dead possum, I mean, if you have a special thing in your heart for possums, you might be a little sad. Yeah. But regardless, 
if you see, saw a dead person on the side of the road, yeah. it would be a very, very, very different, different experience. experience. Yeah, that's right. You drive by the dead possum, you drive by a hundred dead possums, and you don't stop and pull over and call the cops. Um, you see a dead person on the road, this is a very different experience. Mm -hmm. Why? Why is that such a different experience? My little chicken line is, and this is when I'm unpacking John Paul II's reflections on Genesis. And I'll say, you know, despite all the modern propaganda that wants to convince us that chickens are people too, we know there's a difference. Chickens don't look up at the stars and wonder mm -hmm. what's out there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, chickens don't build cathedrals or skyscrapers. And nor do chickens get into airplanes and fly them into skyscrapers. Mm -hmm. The point is, what do we have that the animals mm -hmm. don't have? We have this glorious thing and challenging thing called freedom. Mm -hmm. uh, what will we do with our freedom? Will we use our freedom to, to love? Uh, you know, animals don't have moral responsibility because they don't have freedom. And I'll often tell this story of a, a guy fell into a, a gorilla cage at the San Diego Zoo. And the gorilla kicked the schnot out of this guy mm -hmm. and he was hospitalized. And he I was, remember that, yeah. Yeah, he was being interviewed afterwards mm -hmm. and he said, I tried to reason with the gorilla, <laughs> Ouch. but it didn't work. Oof. Well, why? Uh, because gorillas don't have reason, right? We can speak of gradations in the intelligence mm -hmm, of mm -hmm. animals, right? A gorilla is more intelligent than a worm. A dolphin is more intelligent than a, a mouse. Um, but there's, between the gorilla and the human being, it's not just a degree. Mm -hmm. There's a difference in kind. Mm -hmm. And it raises all kinds of questions. This is one of the big questions on the internet when it comes to animals. Will, our, will we be with our pets in heaven? Yeah. Uh, different theologians have different takes on that, but I'm going to throw my two cents into it. I cannot make heads or tails, pun intended, <laughs> pun intended. as to why theologians conclude, if they're reading the scripture, that all of creation will not be be taken up in some way, we do have to make distinctions, you and I are persons with freedom, which means we have the capacity to participate in the inner life of the Trinity in a way that a squirrel or a dog or a cat or a giraffe mm -hmm. will not, mm -hmm. does not have and will never have. But all of creation, Christ came to save the whole universe. And when the Word was made flesh, all of physical creation was impacted. And Scripture speaks... From the beginning of time to, to the, the end, end of time. time. Scripture speaks of a new heaven and a new, new earth. earth. So somehow, some way, making proper distinctions, my love for snuggles is going to be fulfilled yeah. in the resurrection at the end of time. Somehow, I don't know how exactly it's going to go, yeah. but it's going to be better than I can imagine. I, I remember, this was maybe seven years ago, we had these gorgeous, huge trees in our backyard, kind of twin trees that mm -hmm. branch out together from the same... Mm -hmm. trunk mm -hmm. and big windstorm one of them fell over and i was so sad about the loss of this tree uh, i had a, an attachment a love for this tree and and i was deeply consoled when i was out there and i was like choking up in tears and i just heard a, a quiet whisper um, that i'm just going to believe was the holy spirit just saying be not afraid there will be a new heavens and a new earth and your love for this tree will be redeemed. Uh, that's real stuff. Yeah, and, yeah. and as you were saying earlier, it can go sideways and you have people who are like save the baby seals, but they're pro-abortion at the same yeah. time. And you're like, what? Right. And you have the tree huggers who, who have a disordered love for a creation. But even there, you see this desire to mm -hmm, reconnect mm -hmm. with the original unity we had yes. with creation. Yeah, that's right. So John Paul II speaks of four original unities before sin ruptured them. Mm -hmm. Unity between God and humanity. Unity between body and soul in each of us. Mm -hmm. Unity between man and woman. And unity between humanity and the rest of creation. of creation. Yeah. And this love for pets, this love for your favorite tree in the backyard. Mm -hmm. I had this when I was a kid. I had this pine tree in our backyard that I loved to climb. I climbed it so often I could climb it with my eyes closed because I knew where all the branches were. And there was a spot up in the pine tree where I'd go and sit and I had these perfect arm rests and leg rests from the branches. 
and I, when the breeze would blow and I was up there and the, I'd sway with the wind, it was a sacred moment. Mm -hmm. I didn't know it was a sacred moment. I wouldn't even had that vocabulary when I was eight years old, but it was a sacred moment. God was wooing me. And, and that love for that tree is, is a desire in my heart to, to reconnect with that original unity with creation. Mm -hmm. Mandy, our dog, is 11 years old and, you know, we'll have her for another couple years if we're lucky. Mm -hmm. And I'm kind of bracing myself. Yeah. I, the yeah. last time I dealt with the death of the dog didn't go so well yeah. when yeah. I was 14 years old. And, and I need to give myself permission to grieve. Absolutely. And I, I don't, yeah, just pray for me. I, yeah. I, I, yeah. I, I want to allow myself to feel yeah. the loss. Yeah. Without because, shutting my heart down. Because you value the, that creature in your life. Like she's a beautiful part of your life. So, so much yeah, grace. So much, even as you're saying, I'm. <laughs> <laughs> so much grace has yeah. come to my heart. Yeah. Through that dog. Uh, yeah. I mean, this is why you know I joked a little bit about my rabbit dying, my daughter crying, but I let my daughter cry, yeah. and we buried the rabbit, and we talked about the rabbit, and we put a gravestone or a rock over the rabbit. And part of me was like, gee, oh my gosh, they're just a rabbit. Come on, honey. But I thank God I didn't say yeah, any of those yeah, things to yeah. her for this very reason. I'm like, no, like she she loved that bunny. And I had to let her express that the loss of that relationship for her. And, you know, it's not meant to be that way. So I think in the resurrection, you know, we're going to see, like you said, we, we, we have a hope and a new heaven and a new earth. Somehow it's all going to be taken up and we're going to be experiencing that uh, in its fullness. It's not just uh, heaven. Isn't just a yeah. uh, some dreamy ethereal yeah. um, existence where we're just happy with nothing. You know, that's like right. it's no. It's still like we know that there's something concrete, real. There's a real creation. And that's it redeemed. takes us back to the truth that matter matters. Right. Yes, the great right. heresy. You could even say the that's summation right. of all heresies is that matter doesn't matter. Yeah. No matter matters. Mm -hmm. Our God wed Himself to this created order, this physical created order, so that this physical created order of which we are the pinnacle, yeah. we sum up, this is right out of the catechism, we sum up in our yeah. bodies all the elements of the created world. So the rest wow. of creation goes the way that we go. I'll often say to my students, you know, we teach these classes right over here at the retreat center, and there are these beautiful forest right outside the windows. And I'll say, these are very happy trees out here mm -hmm, because mm -hmm. they've experienced over 7,000 <laughs> yeah. students yeah. sitting in this classroom, opening their hearts to the redemption of the body. Yeah. And St. Paul says in Romans chapter eight that all of creation mm -hmm. is groaning mm -hmm. as in labor pains, waiting for you and me mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and all of humanity to say yes to the redemption of our bodies. Because mm -hmm. as we say yes to the redemption of our bodies, the whole physical world participates in that redemption. I mean, I've even experienced, if you had this experience, I've actually apologized to my dog before, like asked yeah. his forgiveness. Now, he's I, a dog. Yeah. So, you know, he's, I didn't really sin against him in that way. But because of this, so I, on some level, I wanted my dog to know yeah, that that's I, legit. Not, I did not treat him properly. That's legit. So that so that somehow the grace of yep. uh, that God fills into creation would be re be reordered in some little teeny way yep. Yep. into the right direction. <laughs> My I, I have apologized to Mandy yeah. because I know this is another way that God works through my dog. I know that when I'm treating Mandy poorly, yeah. something's off here. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Something's really absolutely. off. She's like a barometer yeah. for how I'm yeah. the way I'm treating her. That's what I meant to say. The way I'm treating her is mm -hmm. a barometer for how what's I'm going on doing inside. here. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's deep well, stuff. It is deep stuff. And so, I mean, I, you know, my encouragement to, to everybody who's watching us is to, is go, go again, deeper in the theology of the body. It takes us, it takes us into this, into the, this true deep appreciation, certainly of ourselves as, as humans, but I love the way you broke down the four relationships. It really takes us properly into those four relationships. Unity with God, yep. unity of body and soul, unity of man and woman, and unity of man and woman with all of creation. With Mandy. With Mandy. The puppy dog. And with... With Cap, with my Cap. chocolate lab. There it is. And with your pets. That's right. Be not afraid.